so the scoreboard right now is the best scoreboard I think I've ever seen on a Saturday morning. There's like 18 people playing and there's like 19 teams or something like that, which means there's a lot of one-offs. If you guys decide that you want to start combining teams, we're going to tally up what the numbers are right now, but the first place prize looks to be around $4,500 worth of stuff um, for first place for the capture of the flag. Woo! Second, third place is, is gradually down from there, but Nuand, Aruba, BI Achievers, Edis, help Pony. me here, Pony Express, Simple Wi Fi. Simple <laughs> We have a website. We have a website. <laughs> um, they've all been donating prizes and money to us for the conference, um, and not just for this conference. We use these for all of our conferences. We do about 12 a year, um, and we do about 12 uh, Capture the Flags a year. So that being said, you guys are kicking ass. Keep doing it. It's awesome. Um, please ask questions during now. If you have questions about the foxes, the hide-and-seek, um, anything that's going on in the room, uh, Russ is surprisingly... <laughs> not here right now so if we have specific SDR challenge questions we're gonna have to pick his brain unless Dan can answer it um, but Russ is the uh, weird mad scientist behind some of the SDR stuff My for those of you that don't know what we're talking about so software defined radio is something that we realized a couple years ago was gonna be enormous and we were right and all the rest of the industry kind of followed suit somebody then said in a capture the flag one time oh, SDR is just a sideshow so if you want one of the SDR as a sideshow stickers, we have a couple of those um, because they made us laugh, so we made stickers. Um, but Software Defined Radio gives us mortal humans the ability to actually see what's in the air. Um, once Russ sets it up, and I think it's going to be, it's either up on a couple frequencies or we have to check it, we're actually painting the air, painting the RF. So if you have even the $18 um, dongle and GQRX, which is a free tool that comes with Pen2 and is available to load on Ubuntu, Raspbian, Kali, you name the, the Linux distribution. You can actually see pictures in the air. We can actually send JPEGs into the waveforms in the air and you can pull pictures out of the sky. It's, it's, it's tagging, spray painting, whatever you want to call it, air graffiti, um, but it is a really, really, really cool capability that we saw two years ago at a conference and tried to get in the middle of. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> during, during one of Bolland's presentations, yeah. actually. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so these, you know, forefathers of SDR that have been doing it for five years that are, you know, the old dudes in SDR at this point um, have just paved the way for us to have a whole lot of fun. So in that, we have our challenges painted with that logo so that we don't have to tell you the frequencies for the challenges, CTFers. Um, so if you go across the spectrum and start looking for about a 20 meg wide, 18 meg wide? No, way narrower than no, that. It's like one, is yeah, it one it's meg like one. wide? Okay. Depending on the frequency and the challenge, it's, yeah. it's pretty narrow to um, appropriately fit in that band. You will see a JPEG of our daily JPEG running across that's highlighting the frequency for the challenge. You see that, look a couple, you know, a couple megahertz to the left, a couple megahertz to the right, and you should see something very, very interesting might be music playing, it might be a TV signal, it might be something else that Russ has come up with, it might be Poxag, um, Pager Network, there's, there's a whole lot of stuff out there, um, and that's on the challenge uh, slides. So again, please, if you have questions, go to the challenge slides. If those slides don't answer, come up to us and ask, and, and you know, we'll help you from there. The schedule is on Hacker, Hacker Tracker, it's at the information booth, and it's also on our website at wctf.us. Uh, current conference and then the, the schedules right there. So the whole schedule of talks for the for the next two days is up there. Um, I think we have what eight, twelve talks today. I think it's ten. Ten. Okay. Um, I hope it's ten. At one o'clock, <laughs> thirteen hundred today, we're going to do the SDR drinking game. If you're not playing, it's really fun to watch. Um, if you're into watching athletic-ish like events in IT, <laughs> basically we throw up a signal and the first person to find it raises their hand. And they say, "I found it." We walk over and verify it. They then flip a coin. Heads, they drink. Tails, everybody else is playing drinks. We provide the beer. It's fun for everybody. We all laugh. Um, but it's 50 points per signal. So if you're really good at finding signals quickly, it's a, it's a real, good, uh, real good contest. A lot of what we do in this is to get people the capabilities to go out in the world and do this as a job. We all do this as a job, and we bring what we see on a regular basis into the conference, into the Capture the Flag, to give you real-world experience. There are no shooting ranges for IT. There are no places that you can just hack stuff. 
You know, it's, it's called illegal or it's called your own home lab. And you start to know the answers, it's easy to find the answers. If you don't have a clue what the answers are and we make it difficult for you, you're going to dig and dig and dig and dig until you find it. And when you find it, hey, cool, you've learned something. And you've, you've failed 25 times to get that one time that you learn it. And you don't forget that piece and then you move on to the next. Cracking web, cracking WPA. We've got a couple industrial capable wireless networks that are exactly what you would see if name your contract, DOD contractor of choice, uncleared. Um, we're not running Sweet B this year. There's a chance we might next year. Um, Sweet B is the what is approved for classified deployment that also companies can use that aren't classified. Um, but it is literally the wireless media exchanger back to an encrypted back end off of a controller with the data encrypted underneath of it. There are ways of breaking it. We'll allow you guys to try and see what you can figure out. Um, so that being said, <laughs> CTFers, do you guys have any questions? This is open forum. If you don't want to ask in front of everybody. Oh, hold on. Let me, uh, oh. let me field some of the questions that we've had already. Oh. Um, I had a couple of complaints yesterday about being unable to connect to the network. Duh. <laughs> Welcome to DEF CON. Uh, to the people who keep jamming the network, I really would like it if my music stayed playing. Uh, jamming is bad, and if you do it long enough and my music stops long enough, I'll get bored and then we'll have to hunt for you and accidentally break things. Do I look happy? Yes. This Kay. is happy. This is happy. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Saturday. All right. Um, there were a couple of problems with the wireless setup yesterday that have been uh, augmented to hopefully stand up just a touch better to all the constant abuse. So hopefully that'll work well. And if you were interested in the ICS challenges, we decided to make it just a touch easier today. I'm not going to explain how, but it's protected by a web network just like uh, an ICS network should be. ICS. And I said ICS. ICS. I almost ICS. didn't. ICS. I, I almost got hurt. I said ICS, though. <laughs> so if you want to connect to a web network and try to attack ICS today, you might find something different when you connect, making it a whole lot easier to find what you're trying to attack. So there's a lot of points on the board for that. I highly recommend it. Uh, yeah, that's great. We have a couple of people running with some just oh, epic can antennas. We get a flag over here? I see a whole lot of yeah. jumping around yeah. and woohooing. Aww, that's so fun. cute. <laughs> so I see a whole lot of really ridiculously sized antennas, and uh, we were chatting with some of the competitors earlier. So just as a reminder, um, antennas aren't magic, and they don't boost your signal. They shape your signal. So if you have an omnidirectional antenna. What that means is it's omnidirectional on the horizontal plane. So the higher the number, the less vertical plane you get. So if you have a 9 dBi antenna on your desk, you won't see what's in the hotel room below you. You might not see what's in the room you're in. You might not see what's in the room you're in because it'll blow out the front end of your radio, which is also funny. Um, what does that mean? It means that Mike Osman probably tell you you have to desolder components from your hack RF and then fix it. <laughs> so that's for wireless, for Wi-Fi, as well as for wireless. So in the RF challenges, when we see people with the Ant-5 antennas that are, you know, yay high, you're seeing Nellis Air Force Base, by the way, when you've got that antenna up. And you're probably seeing a couple of Immersats, and you're probably seeing ADSB. You're probably not seeing what Russ is sending out. So bring your antenna down. If you're doing a fox hunter, you're doing something mobile, I promise you, you won't break your radio unless you screw up, so I'm not, you know, going to take full blame. But if you take a paper clip, you know those things that hold that, that papyrus gel, gelatinous stuff that they press down, and you stick it in the end of your, um, of the end of your hack RF or your radio and walk around, you will find the fox. If you've got a, an Ant-5 out this far, you're going to see the fox the entire time you're at the conference and wonder why you can't spot them. When they walk past you and you've got a piece of crap antenna stuck in the end of your radio, they're going to show up like a fucking massive, huge signal. When you have this antenna up, they're always going to show up like a massive signal because we're running at 72 megahertz. 72 megahertz is a big wave. Think of the size of a hertz. I mean, we're, we're talking, you know, electronics and physics here. 2.4 gigahertz is really, really low, high frequency, pretty razor sharp. When you start getting into the lower frequencies, you start to get a much differently shaped sine, sine wave. 
So going down one of these hallways, it's going through the entire hallway, down two or three floors, back up again, and back down. If you've got an antenna this big, you're going to see all of that. If you've got a piece of crap, you're not going to see the fox until you're right there, and then you look around and go, okay, go up to 12 people and say, are you the fox, are you the fox, are you the fox, or what does the fox say? What does yes, the fox say? What does the yeah. fox say? And yeah, variable attenuation it. is a really good thing. So maybe you start with it like this, and you say, I can see the fox, and then you put it down, and down, and down, and down, and a paperclip. Because honest to God, the paperclip will find the fox way, way more easily than a real antenna most of the time. Besides Charm this year, we, we did a test, and we actually got people to listen to us for the first time. And they literally were finding the fox in minutes, and we were just sending it out again over and over again. It was like, oh, there it is. Oh, that's really cool. There it is. Learn what choke points are, guys. If you're trying to find the fox or the hide-and-seek, learn what choke points are. Choke points are the way that you track warm, watery bodies that are masking signals as they're walking around. A choke point is a part of a walkway where people have to go like this and go through. If you're standing there and you see that signal come through, and you have more than one person on your team, have them flank back and start looking for where the signal goes. Gosh, I wonder if casinos or places like that that oh are high security God. would be like specifically designed to have those? You think so? And hotels too, especially when they're trying to get you to go to food. Huh. huh. That's yeah. interesting. So I promise you, you will find it. If you weren't here for the talk yesterday on Finding the Fox, we typically bring back the team that found the fox the prior year to give a talk on how to find the fox. You should have listened because they did a really good job. And those and talks are recorded and posted like every year, so... So. Look up the last year and the year before and the year before that. We've got a lot of video content posted at this point. Use it. We created this year's contest to handle two different, specifically different groups of people. The people that are hardened into wireless capture the flag, that know what they're doing, that can literally sit here for three days straight and get a ton of points. We also made it for the people that aren't really good at this, but are good at human or good at being an agent or being a counter intel spy or whatever you want to call it and can go out and find things because that's really fun too. But we've scheduled, uh, set up the points so that if you found all the foxes, you could essentially win the whole thing without doing a single thing in the room. If you found the hide and seeks, the foxes, and maybe cracked WEP, I think you'd be well in first place right now. So. Those are the kind of things that we've restructured this so that different people can have fun with the things that they do. I personally like the tracking. Sitting in a, sitting in a room is great because there's no crowds, but I like the tracking, so we build that in. We're doing one a day at 750 points each, plus three a day in Bluetooth at 350, 500, and 750. Start adding those points up, and that's, that's a lot of points that are on the board right now. Bluetooth hunting is A, because Blue Hydra was released, thanks to Rick and Gabe, if he's still here. Gabe, thank you, Gabe. Um, they had a really good talk in 101 the other day. Um, but also because everybody in this room, raise your hand if you've got a Bluetooth device on you or with you right now. And everyone in the room should raise their hand because you all have a phone in your pocket, I promise. And if you don't, you did one of those listen to the DEF CON stuff and whatever. Your laptop, your phone, your Fitbit, your watch, your headset, I got like five, like yeah. right now. <laughs> and that means that he now has a digital signature that I could track him all over New York City without a whole lot of problem once I figure out how to find him. You're very trackable. If you know how to be tracked, you know how to hide from being tracked if that's something that's important to you. And it could be important if you're going to a business meeting and you have a big merger coming up. If you've got important information on your laptop. If you're going to work and you don't want to be trailed because of the work you do. I have an alert for when my mother-in-law pulls in the driveway. And there's that. <laughs> I mean, there, there's a lot of uses of this software, guys. <laughs> so Bluetooth, you combine a Bluetooth signal with an SDR signal from, let's say, what, OnStar, uh, car calling home, any type of, of uh, TPMS chip that's on your vehicle. Your cellular type, which is a frequency type, I'm not saying sniff cellular, I swear to God I'm not saying sniff cellular, but a frequency type for Verizon, for AT&T, for T-Mobile, or for Sprint is an indicator. Your TPMS on your car, your OnStar or whatever else system you have, XM radio, I've got flow graphs for each one of those types of signals that we can actually put into place and track a human anywhere. And we do that because this is one of the things that we do for, for a living. 
But when you have the ability to find somebody you can protect them, you can also find them and show them how to be a little bit better at what they do. So there's some OPSEC, there's some human, and there's also some, some cloak and daggery stuff that's just fun to play with. These are also the kinds of things you can do passively. You're not collecting any data. To my knowledge, I'm not a lawyer and I didn't stay in Holiday Inn Express, it's not illegal to track a signal. I don't think. As far as I'm aware, if you tune to a cellular band and decode data, that is oh. illegal and everything else is okay. Yeah. Tracking is allowed. It's fun. Play games. My kids walk around the yard with their walkie-talkies and we you know, show signals of where they are. It's fun. Um, casino. Adding Bluetooth to somebody. Adding Bluetooth to a school when you start to see students going off, off site. It's a safety capability that you know you could go back to work and say, hey, listen, what are those little chips? Uh, a buck each? Two bucks each? Yeah. You could actually do safety tracking of groups, of important people at work, of your CEO. There's a lot of things that this capability is going to start to allow for that spooky groups have been doing for years that you can now start bringing down into some safety and security for groups. So, again, just thoughts that, you know, we ramble on about. But you've heard of IoT? Everybody heard of IoT? You know what IoT is? It's, it's wireless. It's wireless. That's it. It's cheap, unauthenticated, improperly implemented wireless. If you understand this stuff, IoT is silly. But also, biomed starts to become sort of silly. And pager networks, and protecting, and data protecting, and tracking, and all these other things really start to get silly when you start looking at the physics of how RF works. That's what we're trying to do here. So if you have questions about any of that stuff, we still have 40 minutes to stand up here and either dance, talk, or play music again. So before we do questions, a reminder of the rules. There basically aren't any. <laughs> Connecting to our network is consent for us to do whatever we please. And sometimes we're bored, sometimes we're angry. Uh, please keep connecting to the network. It's been fun so far. Um, yes, the, we play. Everything is allowed. That means you can come up to us and ask us questions. Hey, can I see your laptop? Hey, can I have a password? You got any spare keys? Why, yes, I do. We might give you a key. We might not give you a key. It might be a negative key. Whatever it is, it's all completely permitted. We also show all of the taken flags and available flags. If you guys are playing and haven't looked at that whole list, look at it. There Seriously. Are a couple, there are a couple rabbit holes in there that you may want to go down that don't take any technology whatsoever. There's actually one on there that if it's not taken by the end of maybe today, I'm going to have to just kick all of you out. Because it's really, like, seriously, we gave you a whole in-brief full of hints and nobody seems to have read the scoreboard, which miraculously this year has the names of all of the challenges, which turn out to be better hints than the hints were sometimes. So seriously, people, seriously, that's a hint. It's up there. It's right there. Yeah. There it is. It's yeah. just not on the screen. Just scroll down on the scoreboard. I know that's going to be tough for Raging Security and whoever those other two people on top are, I can't read from here. But like, I know your name's on the top, but like scroll down, see what you're missing. There's a lot missing. And some of it is, it should be easier than you think. Well, it depends, this is DEF CON. <laughs> that is true, this is DEF CON. A don't follow hygiene. Uh, it is disgusting. All right. Questions? Oh, Concerns, yeah, and uh, leave the hotel alone, leave the casino alone, the casino is out of bounds. Do not play in the casino. Thank you. Well, I mean, you can play slots, but don't be walking around with antennas and shit. Yeah, they, they get a little cranky. More than a little. And by a little, I mean, like, really cranky. Yeah. Yeah. Close the laptop screen when you have to walk past the slot machines. We Don't be playing in there. We have taught covert fox hunting in the past. Yeah, Folks. and we're not going to talk about that. They can watch the videos. We're not encouraging them to walk through the casino. I just said we've talked about it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Questions? Concerns? Somebody want to do jumping jacks to wake up? And now Mike Ryan. Have you ever ridden a skateboard? <laughs> Damn it. Oh, it's actually the one-year anniversary of our vulnerability release, and it looks like it's almost matched it. One-year anniversary of the vulnerability release in the skateboards, and they still haven't patched it. Is that why you're not riding it this year? Because now you put it into Uber Tooth Tools and you're afraid to ride it? It may or may not be less than <laughs> <laughs> Look up Mike Ryan's talk on skateboards. It's awesome. Mike Ryan and Richo Healy. Richo Healy. He's jumping out of airplanes. Wait, you mean not Moxie? Jesus. Uh, 
Excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, if there's no questions, there's a talk starting at 11 o'clock on the schedule, and uh, we'll let you guys hack, and I guess you guys can be comfortable. And if you guys just want to sit somewhere at DEF CON where it's not overly hot and crowded, enjoy.